just last week, Gilead scored a major win when the FDA approved their new cancer immunotherapy drug as a treatment for large B-cell lymphoma. We've been talking about these novel cancer treatments for ages. Today, I want to circle back to another company that's operating in a similar space. I'm talking about Agenis, the symbol is A-G-E-N, which makes vaccine adjuvants. Well, there are compounds that make vaccines more effective by revving up your body's immune system. Why vaccines? Aren't they supposed to prevent disease, not cure them? Here's the thing. One of the things that makes cancer so hard to fight against is that cancer cells are grown from your own body, which means your immune system often has trouble recognizing them as hostile. Vaccines work by teaching your immune system what to target, and that's where Genesis comes in. They're working on compounds that strip cancer cells of their ability to hide from your immune system. In fact, their lead product candidate works by taking tissue directly from a patient's tumor, using it to whip up a personalized vaccine. The company's lead oncology vaccine, the treatment for glioblastoma, which is a really brutal form of brain cancer, is currently in phase two trials, but they've got a bunch of earlier stage drugs in the pipeline. Plus, Genesis is working with GlaxoSmithKline on vaccines for shingles and malaria, and the former just received FDA approval on Friday. There's a lot going on here, but I have to caution, this is a tiny company, speculative stock. Be extremely careful, do your homework. Still, I think the story's intriguing, so let's take a closer look with Garrow Armin, he's the chairman and CEO of Agenis, to find out more about how his company's doing and where it's headed. Mr. Armin, welcome back to Mad Money. Good to see you, Garrow, have a seat. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, so yes. Garrow, we've got to divide things uh, into both the new company, the. Uh, the new subsidiary and also the success you're having with the vaccines for some of the more traditional drugs. I want to start with the cell therapy because everyone's very, um, let's say, excited about these kinds of new therapies. And many people didn't realize until you did this that you've got a pretty interesting division that's working on it. Yes. I, as you know, Jim, cell therapy is exciting because it's curing previously incurable patients, right. particularly young people. And that's one of the reasons, as you alluded to, uh, Gilead paid $11 billion for the acquisition of Kite. In our case, we have been working on this program for the last two and a half years, and we've generated a pipeline of very exciting cell therapy programs. That's one of the reasons we're segregating it, right. so that we can have our own talent in the business with its own focus and the ability to be able to fund it separately. Okay, so will this eventually be a company that people will trade publicly, or is it something that you believe that uh, different companies might want to invest in that company? It's premature, but I think publicly traded cell therapy subsidiary of Agenis is a highly plausible possibility. Okay. Now, you do have money in the bank, and, and you've got the malaria, and you've got this uh, shingles vaccine. Where did those, are those going to be cash cow, so to speak, to fund the more experimental therapy? As you know, we talked about this last time, malaria is more of a public services product, right. and I think it's unreasonable to expect that we'll make it. Right, and you don't want it. I mean, it's just not yeah. the right call, given how poor the people are who yes. get it. Ab absolutely. Right. Whereas shingles is a major problem in the U.S., Western Europe, and even in Japan. So there's a lot of money made to be made there. Uh, we um, sold a part of our royalties early on, about two and a half years ago. However, uh, it was a very, very smart transaction because these royalties are repurchasable, and our conviction is that this is a multi-billion dollar product opportunity. So it's possible that we will restructure that arrangement in order to be able to capture the cash flow for it. Okay, now let's go back to uh, Agentis. Are you working with particular research centers on this? I mean, hospitals, or is it currently too early for that? Well, we're working uh, with hospitals, of course, okay. because it's a collaborative effort where we need human tissue samples, right. and these hospitals provide us with that. That allows us to have a look into what are the determinants of targeting precisely what are the relevant markers that right. uh, distinguish, for example, certain cell therapies to be effective in certain patients and not others. So yes, the answer is yes, we have collaborations with hospitals. But now I just want people to understand, because it's $4, this could take multiple years. We're not speaking about anything that's on the horizon within the next six months. Uh, Cell therapy has moved very rapidly. Okay. So it's very conceivable that, first of all, we'll be in the clinic next year. Okay. Okay. And 
it's conceivable that within two years or so of being in the clinic, you can have a filing okay. for commercialization. Whereas with other uh, uh, immuno-oncology products, for example, our antibodies, we expect to do our first filing in 2019. Okay, fair enough. All right, well, I want everyone to do their homework. This is an interesting speculative stock. Emphasis on speculative because it is a very low dollar amount. That's Gary Arman, Chairman and CEO of Agenis. Mad Money is back after the break. Thank, Thank you. you. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.